All right, welcome guys. This is going to be a pretty short video because it's not something I can really explain that well in the video. But let's um, at least get a good introduction so when we uh, get to class tomorrow, uh, we'll be ready to really hit the ground running. And I've got several guests here with me today. Uh, I've got Molly McLay for her very first uh, video. So welcome, Molly. And Reese, I don't think you've been in one, have you? I've been you? in one. You've been in one. So Reese is here for a second time. And of course, my perennial favorite, uh, Ben, uh, who first is going... Time. Yeah, the, uh, my mini math teacher, he's Last here to help us today. Um, so Ben Gillig. Um, and so we've got three guests, and we're going to be talking about a problem-solving lesson today called Draw a Diagram. And so here's the basic idea, guys. There are a lot of word problems that when you read them are really hard to picture in your mind. But if you start to kind of draw things down and kind of sketch out a diagram, uh, it makes a lot more sense. So suppose that the three volunteers I have right now uh, decided to race in here uh, to be here for the video. Okay? No. Um, and, uh, and I wanted to kind of keep track of the order. And I said that um, Molly got here before Reese. Okay? And, um, and that Reese was the last person, okay, would you know the order of who got here first, second, and third? Do we have enough information? Well, we've know, we, if we know that Molly got here before Reese, that could, be, could mean that Molly was first and Reese was second and then Ben came in last. Or it could mean that Molly was second and Reese was last and that Ben was here first. That's but those are my only two combinations, right? So I can kind of literally think, okay, so where I, all I know for sure is Molly came before Reese is that, um, and actually Ben could have come in the middle of them. There's actually a third combination, right? Okay, and so by drawing out kind of the possibilities and literally listing, okay, here's the first person, here's the second person, here's the third person. Sometimes we can kind of organize the information. Um, other problems are very geometric in nature. So there's a problem in your book um, that I would like you to actually look at. If you have your book home with you, um, after you watch the video or right now while you're watching, you can pause for a second. Um, look at page 206. And on page 206, um, there is a problem where they're going to have a big soccer tournament. And they're going to take a huge field um, and they're going to divide it up. And, um, and actually, no, they're going to start with a soccer field. They're going to have a volleyball tournament. So they've got this huge field that is 110 yards wide and 80, yard, oops, 80 yards long. Okay? And we're going to divide it up, and we're going to make these little volleyball courts, and each of the volleyball courts um, oh. is going to be a little bit smaller, and it's going to be 25 yards long, and uh, each volleyball court is 15 yards wide. And so the question is, how many of these volleyball courts could we make out of the soccer field? So there's lots of different ways to arrange them, right? And so what you're going to do is you could try, if you put them vertically, you could figure out, okay, how many, how many uh, volleyball courts could I go across? So in other words, how many times does 15 go into 110? Well, that's actually a division problem, isn't it? All right, so it'd be 110 divided by 15 and let's see, what is the answer? That's a hard one. Uh, let's see, six of them would be 90. I think it's seven. And I kind of ran out of room at the top there. Okay, Maybe so we'll put the seven over here. So yeah, seven times 15, I think Ben is right, it's 105. So we'd have a little left over of five yards. Mm -hmm. All right, what about going down the side? If they're 25, ooh, they can't really read that. Okay, that was supposed to be a five. So if they're 25 long, you could put one there, you could put one here, and you'd have a little bit of leftover, but there'd be three of them Okay, and so 3 times 7 would be a total of 21 quarts, but maybe that's not the best way to arrange them. Maybe if you put them sideways, let's change colors here, what if you put them sideways? Then you could figure out, okay, how many could I put this way, and how many could I put this way, and maybe they'll fit better. Or maybe you have to do some weird combination where some of them are going to be like this, and some of them are going to be vertical like this, okay? And so, very often, drawing a diagram is going to be the only way to figure this out. Now, this is also kind of a complicated question because uh, the numbers are kind of big. So what we might want to do is shrink this example down and play around with how to divide up a field into volleyball courts. Okay, but anyway, there's a really good picture on page 206 in your book of this problem. Um, let's say we make the problem a little bit easier, and we'll do one practice problem here. All right, suppose that we want to do um, a gymnastics floor exercise. And gymnastics floor exercises, gymnastics, gymnastics I can't talk today. Um, yes. It's 14 yards by 14 yards when they do the floor exercises. Yes. I was going to write floor there. I don't know anything about gymnastics. Yeah. 
And let's say we want to set that up. How many uh, of these squares could we put on the same soccer field? So again, you go back to the soccer field, draw the big rectangle, and now, because they're square, you won't have to worry about turning them left or right. You can just immediately figure out um, how to, in. yeah, just pack them in. So, and so 14 goes in, how many times across will it go into 110? And vertically, how many times would it go into 80? Boy, you guys are really talking a lot. Sorry. Um, that's what I said. There's really not a whole lot we can explain. So here's the deal, guys. 80. When you watch, um, when you come to class tomorrow, what we're going to do is, since it's a problem solving, what do I usually do on a problem solving lesson for the problems? Together. Well, I usually give you what? So I'll give you a whole bunch of problems, and you, you get to do what? Solve them. Well, which you get to pick, right? Um, so tomorrow in class, um, I'll give you, and you actually do this with your problem solving as well. So it'll be a problem solving class tomorrow, and we'll give you a couple of problems to pick from. And the, the thing I want everybody to be thinking tomorrow is to solve the problem. I want you to draw some sort of diagram. Now, you might be drawing how you stack stuff up. You might be drawing how to divide something up. You might be drawing something like when we did the uh, order of finishers in a race. But come up with a diagram and use the diagram to kind of figure out your, uh, your, your stuff. So, um, all right, so that's really, that's really all I can do right now. But hold on. Um, do you guys want to sign your names on the recording? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. All right, so let's go ahead. Yeah, Everybody yeah. sign your name. And thank you all for watching our video. Tomorrow in class, we will really practice um, uh, drawing diagrams. And since we're drawing, um, my volunteers, Reese and Molly, just write your name. You can't get close to the edge of the screen. All right. And, of course, Ben. Um, <laughs> you know, okay. I'm the only one. Molly anymore. just graduated from kindergarten. There we go. And finally, <laughs> Ben, sign your only. name. First grade. First grade. I'm sorry. That's yes, right. Yes, very good penmanship, guys. Okay, well, that's beautiful. All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Take care.